Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignandTechTips.com. We've had a lot of comments lately. They've just dis discontinued Caldera Forms. Uh, it's still out there and it'll still work for a while, but they're not going to be supporting it. And we did a few videos before about how to how to create a contact form with file upload button using that before. For those of you that want to switch, there's another free plugin out there called Contact Form 7. As long as you set it up right, you can get it to look like your Divi form and add a file upload button. Really easy to do. We've got to do a bit of coding and set up the Contact Form 7 plugin correctly to do this. So let's get started. Okay, I'm going to go and delete the custom styles I wrote for this and don't worry about the CSS. I'll put it all below the video for anybody who wants to copy and paste it. Now, as I mentioned before, Contact Form 7 is a free plugin, so we'll have to add it to the site. So go to your dashboard, down to plugins. I've already got mine installed here. But for those that haven't, go up to Add New. Simply type in Contact Form. And it'll pop up right there. And they've got over 5 million active installs. So install it and activate it. Once you've done that, you'll have a little contact button just up here. I've got a form created already, but what you're gonna to need to do is add a new one. So let's go to add new. And it puts in a basic form for you with a name, an email, a subject, message text area, and a submit button. And you can add various other options here checkboxes, radio buttons. We've done those in previous videos and we'll do some more videos on this. So put your cursor where you want to add your file upload button. So I want it just above my submit button here. So I'm going to put the cursor there. I'm going to add a file upload button. And when you do it, it's going to give you a name and you're going to need this because to make this work, you've got to put this in the next field in a minute. You can give your file size a limit in bytes, or you can just type in, say, 2 MB for two megabytes. If you don't put a, a megabyte or a kilobyte after it, it'll presume it's bytes. So two megabytes being up. Acceptable file types. Well, you want things like whatever it is you'd like, like doc, and separate with a pipe, which is just above the enter key usually, with a shift, uh, docx. PDF and perhaps they might be wanting to upload photos so JPEG PNG and GIF if you want that'll do for me for the moment so they can upload docs docx PDF files JPEGs and pings there I'm not going to give it an ID or a class attribute at this time so we're going to need this number right here the file 770 I'm going to copy that I'm going to go ahead and insert the tag and it's put it in there. And we've got its little number here, file 770. And here's the important part. You need to go over to your mail, roll down the site where it says file attachments, open some square brackets. And in between, we want to put that file 770. There it is right there. And if we roll up, you can put your message in here, the message field, anything you want to reply to. Additional headers there. Subject's going to take the site title. And it's going to say from and the title of the site. And it's going to send it to the admin e email address for the site. Great. Let's save this. Okay. And up here, it's giving us a little short code. So if we copy that. And also, if you go back to your contact forms, you'll see the little short code right here, contact form one. We want form two. And anytime you want to put it anywhere, just go in there, copy the short code. So now let's create a new page and put our form on there. Okay, let's build from scratch. We're just going to put in a single row with a single column in it. 
I'm going to use a code module for this. You could use a text module if you wanted to, but I'm going to use a code module. And inside, I'm simply going to paste that short code we copied. And here's our form over here. We've got our name field, email field, subject field, message field. There's our file upload button and our submit button. Now it's pretty generic looking, but we'll style this in a minute with a bit of CSS. At the moment, it's only taking up sort of a third of our available space here. Okay, I'm gonna save this page and I'm gonna publish it. And I'm gonna to go to my customizer and edit the CSS in there so we can see what's going on. Let's exit the Visual Builder. First thing I want to do really is get rid of those titles and put them as placeholders inside, a bit more like the Divi form itself. So to do that, let's go back to our form. It's form number two, we can edit it. And here's the label on each one, your name, your email, your subject. What we can do, we can get rid of the label up there after your name let's put placeholder and we'll open some inverted commas and inside put what you want it to say now we'll copy that and we'll do the same thing after the email I'm going to put a gap I'm going to paste it in there your email same thing for the subject gap paste it in there Put in whatever you want it to say. And here's the text area message. So just after message, little gap, paste it in there. Great. And we'll have the submit button say submit. If you wanted to change what the button says, you could change that there. So let's save our changes here. If we go back to the form site, now when I refresh, you can see those have turned into placeholders and I need to get rid of the titles there as well. So let's go and get rid of those titles, the label, subject, label. And let's save again and refresh. There we go. We've got all placeholders now rather than titles up there. Great. So we really want to assign some CSS to this now. So let's give our fields a class name that we can target with some CSS. So back in our form, well, let's give this a CSS class. So right after your name there and your email, just before the placeholder, let's give it a class, colon. And let's call it CFRM for contact form and put a space after it there. I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to paste it for every field that we want to edit. So after the email and after the subject and after the message. We've now got a name that we can target this all with some CSS. Let's save the changes here. Okay, let's go to the customizer. To do that, go down to your dashboard, down to appearance and then customize. If you click on that, it's going to bring you to this page right here. I'm going to set my page as the home page briefly. I've got it selected here so we'll be able to see it over here. And I'm going to write my code in the additional CSS panel down the bottom here. So let's publish this and refresh the page. And there's our little contact form page. Now we've given all these fields a name of CFRM. So we can target that, make them the color and size that we actually want. At the moment, they're only taking up about a third of the available space here. I want to make mine full width. So let's put that class name, and don't forget all this code will be below the video, CFRM. Let's open some curly brackets there, and in between we can put the code we want. Well, the first thing I want is the same color as the Divi forms for the background of our fields here. So I'm going to say background, colon, and I have to know that color's EEE, -E -E, so it's hashtag EEE. -E -E. And it's done it, but it's only done it for the one. Because we're overriding styles, all of these should be that color. 
So I need to add important after this to actually force it. So it's exclamation important. That's better. And as you can see now, all of our fields turn that color. Great, next thing I wanna do is stretch these out the whole of the available space. And I've got one column in my row here, so they can take up pretty much all of that page there. So let's say width, 100%. There we go, 100% of the available space. Fantastic. Put a semicolon. We always put a semicolon after each line of code. If you forget to put that there, it's not going to read the next one. So get in the habit of putting those in there. I want to make these fields a little bit bigger because the Divi ones are a little bit bigger. So let's give them a bit of extra padding. Let's say give them 15 pixels all around. Let's say padding, colon, 15 pixels and again that's just made the bottom one a little bit wider there so we're gonna to have to force it I'm gonna copy that important right there or you can just type it in again if you want to that's better our fields are a lot wider now they've still got that border around them Divi doesn't usually have a border around its fields okay looks like they're really squared off corners there so I'm gonna slightly give those a bit of a rounded edge by using a bit of border radius border dash radius let's give them say five pixels obviously all of this is subjective you give yours exactly what you want that's not too maybe a bit much let's take that down to three and it's got slightly rounded corners there and what I'll do rather than say border none to take that border away in case you want to put a border on yours I'll just make the border the same color as our background it'll look like there's no border there so let's say border, colon, and I'm going to make it one pixel wide. I'm going to make it solid, and we'll make it that same EEE -E -E color. And again, it's done it for the bottom one, but not the top one. So we've got to force it. So I'm going to paste the importance there. That's better. All of our fields are now looking how we want them. Great. So that's looking much more like a DV contact form there. Not a whole lot we can do about our file button there, but we can certainly style our submit button here. I'm using Google Chrome here with the great inspector tools. So I'm just going to get a class name for this button by right clicking, hitting inspect. And here are our classes. It's input, it's a submit, value submit. Here's the various classes. Form control has spinner. I'm going to double click. Where there's a gap, that's a different class name. Where there's a gap, new class name there. I'm going to take this one on the end, WPC F7 Submit. I'm going to copy that, Control C. Let's drop down here. It's a class name, so it needs a dot or a period in front of it, and then the class name. Let's open and close some curly brackets, and we can style it inside there. Close out that inspector. Okay, I'm going to make the background the same color as our page here, which is white, or you could make it transparent if you wanted. So it's background, FFF, which is white. Great, that's done that. I want to make it a bit taller and a bit wider, so we'll do that with a bit of padding. So I'm going to say padding, 10 picks, top and bottom, as you can see, it's got taller there and 15 picks say left and right that's looking a bit more like it maybe a little bit more let's make that 20 pixels great and I think I want to make my we're sort of having an outline button here I want to make it the text and the border perhaps the same color as my logo here so I've got a free chrome color picker up here let's get this color And I'll copy that. And again, we'll create our own border. We'll say border. And let's make it two pixels, solid. And we want it to be that color I just copied. So it's hashtag and the hex code. We've now got a blue little border around there. And let's make that text the same color. So I'll just say color automatically apply to that text there and we'll put that same 
same color in there and we've now changed the color of our font I want to make it a little bit bigger so I'm going to perhaps bring it up to 20 pics font size 20 pixels that's better that's looking more like a divi button now okay and perhaps when we hover over it I'll have it reverse and make the background and the border that same color and have the writing in white so let's copy this whole class name to create the hover state from the dot to the T control C to copy I'm going to drop down I'm going to paste it in there after the T of submit I'm going to put a colon no gap colon and the word hover to create a hover state I'm going to open and close some curly brackets now and in between I'm going to change the background so let's just copy that that's better and we want to change the writing to white so all we're going to do is drop down and say color white FFF that's great now it's doing it instantly I kind of like it to slow that down a little bit perhaps take half a second just make it a little bit more graceful we'll do that in the regular state I'm also I'm going to add a bit of corner to the button there similar to our fields up here in fact I can just copy our border radius up here put it in our regular state for our button and to slow it down we need to use transition duration and that wants to go in the regular not the hover state so it's transition and it's prompted us down the bottom there put a colon in I want mine about 0.6 of a second so point six s per second now when we hover over that's more graceful great well let's publish our changes here as I mentioned earlier all this code will be down below the video for anybody who wants to copy it you're welcome to and just change whatever you need to great let's go back to our form page and refresh it should turn into our new form now and of course we need to fill it out and send it of course we need to choose a file now I'm just going to upload a little PDF there we go and then we'll hit the submit and we've got a nice message has been sent there um, let's go back to the forms a minute third tab are messages and you can change the messages that pop up error messages etc here I leave them as a default because they're pretty good they work for me but if you need to change those messages you can do so right there okay and here it is there's our little message there's the message generic field there's our little attachment attached there so that's worked absolutely perfectly and don't forget when you're configuring make sure you go into this mail part and do the file attachments that's really important if you want this to work if it's not working that's probably the reason so there you go guys let's refresh this page there is how to create a contact form with file upload using contact form 7 if you've been using caldera forms and it's no longer working for you this is a great alternative so i hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful if you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.